the Big Island has active volcanoes. Is it something you should be worried about? How do you know what the risk is? We'll talk about all that and more coming up next. Hey, what's going on friends? Dylan Lamaka here with the Buy Big Island video blog and my best video for viewership on YouTube has always been about the lava zones and that one was shot back when there was an active lava flow. So I'm doing an updated video just generally explaining what the lava zones on the island are because that is one of the most common questions I get from folks that are looking to buy on the big island. And even if they're here and they weren't really educated about it prior to, it's very an interesting discussion about the lava zones of the island. So if you weren't aware, the big island has active volcanoes. And so the first thing you got to understand is where those volcanoes are and which ones are still active and which ones are not. So that's what this graphic shows right here is basically the five volcanoes on the big island. And so starting up on the north point, you have the Kohala Mountains, which is considered extinct at this point. Then you have Mauna Kea, which is considered dormant, not extinct, but it's been 4,500 years since it has erupted. And you have Hualalai over here on the Kona side, which is where I live. And that one is still technically active. Um, there is 25% of it has been covered within the last 1,000 years by a lava flow. And then you have Mauna Loa, which is the second most active volcano on the island. That one um, has 40% uh, of its surface has been covered within the last 1,000 years by a lava flow. And then, and then we have Kilauea right here, which is the most active volcano, which, as we all know, in 2018, took Leilani Estates and a bunch of other homes in that area. So that's where all of the active flows have been most recently and so when we look at the next uh slide which tells you a little bit about explains what lava zones are right lava zones are lava hazard zones put together by the u.s geological survey so they are not risk zones right they're not judging your risk they're just telling you what the hazard is of a flow in that area so these are geologists that do this and they base it off of topography the active uh nature of that volcano uh, past flows, all those different types of things. And then they give them a rating from one to nine. And if we go through this, you can read through this. I can send this to you if you're interested, but it pretty much explains what each zone is. And so it's interesting, right? You have like zone one, which is the actual rift zones of Mauna K or of Kilauea and Mauna Loa. And then if you look at like zone six, it's two areas on Mauna Loa that are protected by topography. So that is on Mauna Loa, which is the second most active volcano but it's an area on the south part of the island which is protected by topography so there's a very low hazard of it having a lava flow because of the topography around it so it doesn't necessarily mean that you're like you know what island what volcano you're on the topography matters because obviously lava is a liquid that flows and if you are on a high piece of land the lava wouldn't flow around it and so you don't have very much of a hazard of having lava hit your area. So this is an explanation of every single zone. Zone nine is obviously the safest up on the Kohala mountains because there hasn't been an eruption in 60,000 years. So if you're just looking for definitions, this is where you look right here. And then we get to what the map actually looks like, right? So this is a breakdown of the island and all of the different areas. And you can see how, even though this area down here is all Mauna Loa and Kilauea, there is zone six down here on the southern part of the island. And there's even a zone five right here, which is surrounded by zone one and two and three because of topography. So it doesn't necessarily mean your proximity to the actual lava is different than your hazard of it actually touching your piece of property, right? So that's something you got to understand when you're choosing which where you're going to live and what your uh, lava zone is. You can look at this map there is, I get asked all the time, what's an easy way for me to look online and see what lava zone a property is, is in. There is like a Google Earth file you can download from the USGS if you're into that and you can overlay it and then, you know, bring in the property address and stuff. There is no good, simple, easy way for the public to do it. You can kind of guesstimate based on this map, but I can, uh, with the MLS, overlay the lava zones on top of a map which shows where properties are located and give you a good idea. So a realtor sh should be able to do that and help you with that. But the real discussion here is whether or not you should be worried about this, right? And should it, should it be a deterrent? Is it something that you should, you know, avoid? I don't want to be in lava zone one, two or three. And I get that a lot of times. And I tell people that's very arbitrary way of looking at it. 
in other than lava zone one which are these two very small areas here and this is primarily the area where the flows are right here your chance of having your home taken by lava is extremely extremely low right it's not something that i ever worry about here um everywhere that you live there are natural disasters there are floods there are wildfires there are tornadoes um it's just one of those natural things that the earth provides when you live here on planet earth and so i would not worry myself too much about what lava zone you're in as long as you're not in lava zone one right lava zone two uh people try and avoid it sometimes we just think it's the second highest but that's not really a reason there's no there's no tangible reason to avoid it it doesn't cost you more you can still get insurance um again your likelihood is going to be very very low of any type of risk based on a lava flow so take all that into account of course, do what you're comfortable with. If you want to be in the lowest lava zones possible, you want to be up on the northeast side of the island where you have the dormant volcanoes, but they really shouldn't be a deterrent and it shouldn't be something that you overly worry about because it is what it is. If you're going to live on an island, there's going to be issues like this. Uh, the other islands don't have um, active volcanoes, so it's not, not something you necessarily need to worry about <clears throat> on the other islands, but it's definitely a factor if you are on the big island. So if you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments below or you can uh, shoot me an email at Dylan at Buy Big Island and I'll get back to you. But I hope this is helpful in understanding what lava zones are and whether or not you should worry about them, because it's a very common question. I totally get it. Something foreign to most people, but definitely something we just live with every day on this island. And you really don't think about it because lava's, the, the volcano has been, been active for 30 plus years and it's just a fact of life and life goes on and everybody's cool. So. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Aloha.